Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump are not the only ones on the ballot on Tuesday. Don't forget about Libertarian candidate Gary Johnson, who could still play a big role in this race. While national polls still have him in the low single digits, he's got five or six points in places like New Hampshire, Ohio, Arizona, and Michigan. In each of those states, Johnson's number is larger than the gap between Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton. Libertarian presidential candidate, former New Mexico Governor Gary Johnson, joins me now. Governor. Hey. Good morning. I want morning. to go out of the theoretical and into reality. We're two days away. Can you acknowledge, except you're not going to win this race? Uh, no, I'm in Chicago right now. The Cubs won the World Series, Stephanie. Uh, and um, you know what? Two days from now, uh, 20 days from now, two years from now, how did you vote in 2016? A vote for Johnson? Well, you're going to hold your head high. Okay, but you're talking about what you would say at a party and holding your head high. You got states like Ohio, New Hampshire, Michigan, Arizona. You could swing these states, not for yourself, but you could swing who ultimately wins those states, and it wouldn't be you. Oh, but to give people their first choice, uh, where's the representation of uh, Trump and Clinton? Representation Johnson Weld, you know, fiscally conservative, socially inclusive, really skeptical when it comes to our military interventions and free trade. That's a big difference uh, between the two of them. So it's important to give people their first choice. We're leading among active military personnel. Doesn't that speak volumes? And here we are in Chicago. Chicago Tribune endorsed us, as did seven other newspapers, major newspapers, that said, hey, these guys might not win, but on the basis of principle, on the basis sure. of experience, this is the choice. Principle, theory, experience. These are all very important. But something Thank else that's you. important is your running mate, yes. Bill Weld. Hold on. Is your running mate, Bill Weld. He said on this network right here last week, when it came to the Democratic candidate, Hillary Clinton, he had a lot of good things to say. I just want to share it with you. Well, I'm here vouching for Mrs. Clinton, and I think it's high time somebody did, and I'm doing it based on my personal experience with her, and uh, I, I think she's deserves to have people uh, vouch for her other than members of the Democratic National Committee, mm -hmm. so I'm here to do that. Okay, Governor. Your running mate, Bill Weld, is vouching for Hillary Clinton. Oh, he's really got it in for Trump. And you know what, Hillary, from the day that she, if she's elected, the day that she takes office, she's going to be um, under a drumbeat of impeachment. Uh, whether or not the impeachment happens or not, it's going to be there for four straight years. And I got to say, all this WikiLeaks stuff, all this stuff about her saying one thing to Wall Street and another thing to Main Street, um, hey, when it comes to either one of them. Okay, Gary, then would you be upset if Hillary Clinton won? I'd be ups I'm upset if either one of them win, um, and that's why I'm in the race. I'm going to give people a first choice. Stephanie, why don't you take the theory that nobody that comes out to vote for us would have voted in the first place? We're giving people their first vote. I'm going to stick with that one, and you know what? I'm going to feel good about my impact on this, actually being the principled candidate in this race. Governor. You pointed it out earlier. We're I, the I only you, candidates on the ballot in all 50 states. I want you to feel good. My fear for you is you're not going to feel good on oh, Wednesday believe morning. Me, believe me. Believe me. You're the one that may feel a little ill over the fact that somehow you're pressing the principled guy in this whole race. Ten years in the future, when everybody's talking about the issues that Bill Weld and I are talking about right now, you're going to look back and go, gosh, why didn't I give that guy more attention? Governor, Stephanie, uh, go uh, Governor you know, I'll, I would, I'll, I'll pray Governor, for you. I'll uh, pray for you. I'm not asking you to pray for me. I am asking you, why, not why didn't you take a more aggressive stance earlier in the campaign? This could have been the moment, a real change election. And if you're going to talk about Hillary Clinton and WikiLeaks and go there now on Twitter? Why didn't you do it six months ago when it could have made a difference? Well, amazingly, this is a story that's uh, envelop or that's evolving, isn't it? I mean, Comey comes out, uh, Comey comes out and drops the investigation in July. Uh, clearly principled on the notion that he didn't want this overhanging the election. 
But with just 11 days to go, I have to believe that there's something there. And then with regard to this WikiLeaks stuff and the Clinton Foundation and pay to play, really, six months ago, this stuff wasn't out there like it has been evolving. So this is an evolving story, and I'm just surprised that you haven't done more than you've done. You have done responsibility for this also. We, we've done quite a lot, Governor. Uh, I just want to thank you for joining me today, and uh, good luck on Tuesday. Uh, all right, thanks. All right, coming up.